All right, not my finest hour. Today, we've got a bit of a tricky removal to do. We've got a hive in a brick column. This is where this, hopefully this BVAC is gonna be absolutely crucial and it's gonna work an absolute treat. But anyway, we'll see how we go. So the hive ugh, is there, basically in a brick column that's underneath that corner. Um, and it's tricky because of, well, I'm gonna to have to be up on the roof to do this, but also I've gotta remove, I think all the flashing to remove the sheet of tin. The way these interlock, um, there's no other way of doing it. Something I wanted to point out is, look at all that crap that's falling out, it's stuck it up in there. Whole stack of debris underneath that flashing. Um, and that's, um, like, and you can't clean it out either. Like this stuff, it obviously, the roof needs cleaning, especially in coming into summer as we are, because of um, the bushfire risk. But if you were to clean this out, you would clean it out to there. And unless you took the flashing off, you wouldn't get all this. And a spark gets driven in underneath there, and it catches fire. What a lot of people don't know is that most houses burn down during bushfires um, because of poor maintenance or poor building technique. Uh, during the Canberra fires, well, a few years ago now, um, I think they lost 300 homes, and most of those homes burnt down uh, one to three hours after the fire front had passed through. And that's because a spark would get into a, a, you know, some leaf litter like that, it would smolder away, it would catch fire, and it would catch fire in the house, not outside the house. And of course then, once it gets going, unless you get on top of it really quickly, um, yeah, you lose the house. And so a building method like this in a bushfire area, really bad news. And these new building rigs that we've got after Black Saturday where a whole stack of people died and they said, oh, well, we've got to do something about this, so we're going to make people build safer houses. Those building rigs don't really deal with uh, quality control. And you can use standard building techniques in most areas and your house will be fine as long as you've got good quality control. But anyway, that's my rant for this video against the government. Actually, no, it's not. Um, because those fire rigs, some of them actually make houses more prone to fire than traditional materials. Um, for example, the insistence on using um, steel instead of timber. Yes, timber will burn, but steel and fire fails catastrophically, absolutely horribly. Um, and aluminium is even worse, and aluminium windows seem fine um, in, in some of these building rigs. Whereas a full timber, where there's a full timber window, um, will actually reduce the chance of the house burning down if it's built properly and if it's maintained properly. And even if the house does burn down, it'll burn down after the fire front's gone through, not during the front going through. In a, in a building with steel fixtures and, fixtures and steel structure and so on, that house catches fire, it'll fall on you before the fire front passes through. Much, much more dangerous. So that's yet my rant against the government. Just that they have to be seen to do something rather than actually do the right thing. Okay, that's it, I promise, I promise, back to bees. Well, getting to the um, exciting bit now. Well, that's not a good sign, because I can't see the hive. That means it's somewhere down in the, down in the pillar, like down, down in the pillar, not just, you know, underneath the tin. Uh, well, this just got a whole another level of difficulty harder. I think it's time to get gloved up and suited up and I'm gonna get my hands in there and see what I can find. But again, on the fire risk, look at the material that's accumulated in that pillar. You know, a spark in there on a hot day, that would catch fire for sure. I'm trying a different sort of glove again. Um, those um, plastic ones you saw in the last video worked really well, except I did get a sting through them. Um, there's only one, and considering the number of bees that were all over my hands and what I was doing with them, that's pretty awesome compared to, you know, some of the other gloves I've used. Um, and of course, I got through the grey leather gardening gloves, I got a sting through them all across the knuckles, which was not fun. Um, so now I'm going to try these heavier duty plastic um, chemical gloves. Um, and see, let's see what we can find in here. Oh, far out. Some sort of nest. I'm still not 
seeing any comb. I'm hearing them though, they're getting cross. Oh, no, there's comb. So now, it's time to get the uh, comb frames. I'm just going to get the handle on it without dropping it. Yeah, they're crossed now. Well, there's the banana smell. Oh. Let's just have a look at this brood. I hope the phone is in focus, but um, it's sort of a two colour pattern to that brood. It's a bit salt and peppery, a lot of a few empty cells. Good, eggs. Excellent. Holy moly. Oh, here we go. Ah, there's a spider on the inside of my suit. That's lovely. Okay, so the BVAC is set up. So I've got this um, multi-step um, reducer to make with the collar and then I've taped in the, um, the tube of the vacuum. Uh, I've got the hose coming in around the other side. Um, it's a bit hard to see. I should, have, I should have known this. I should have put in two windows. It's very dark in there. Okay, here we go. Well, it'd be really nice for um, times like this if I had a GoPro or some other sort of camera that I could get into where I'm working because having a look at my back, you know, as I'm moving around with my hand down there, it's probably not that exciting for you guys. Um, but yeah, that'll have to wait until, uh, until the funds allow. If I was just going off the number of bees that are left in this column, I'd probably call it quick because um, yeah, I reckon I've got most of them, but um, based on their behaviour, I don't think we've got the queen, because they're not doing that fly around, oh my god, what sort of happened behaviour, they still seem um, quite purposeful, and there's a real cluster of bees at the bottom, which if the queen was to be anywhere, it's probably jiffy down there, because um, like when I was getting the comb out, there's still a chance that I'd knock her off. And um, also, there's a piece of comb that's actually down there. So, she could, she could have been on it, or she could have been attracted down to it. The comb got taken. Now, I've added a broom handle to this, so I can go, I've got better direction. Because, um, yeah, my arms are only so long. Also, so I'm going to see what I'm doing, I'm going to try this out. And it's going to get bloody hot, but um, hopefully it will take a lot less time. Ugh. Underneath the cover was unbelievably hot, but it did allow me to have a bit more of an idea of what was going on because I could see into the darkness of the column. Um, but it doesn't make for very exciting video. Well, I'm, I'm stonkered. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get a uh, cold drink or something and um, just see what they do. Um, I've opened up the vent on the side of the, um, uh, um, God, I'm not, my brain's not working. I've opened up the vent on the side of the intake box uh, with, the, um, with the ventilation bit uh, over the hole but hopefully the queen is in that hive all the bees that are hanging around the where the, the pillar and so on will start to smell her and hopefully when I come back from having my drink um, those there'll be a big cluster of bees around that entrance and if that's the case then I know my job's done I just open that entrance leave them a bit of leave them for a while or even just suck them up for maybe actually probably what I'll do is I'll suck them up um, and yeah, I, I know I've, I've, I've known basically that I've got the queen. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a drink. <laughs>
because I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm. I'm um, I know I'm not speaking straight, but I'm not sure I'm thinking straight either. Uh, very hot up on that roof. So yeah, I'm gonna go get a drink and then come back and um, see how we've gone. Well, I'm back from lunch and I was hoping to see a whole stack of bees clustered just there, but there's not even one. Up here though, still a bit of a cloud. So I think I'm gonna have to get back up there Turn the back on and turn the back on, then get up there. Important that they get that in order and have another crack. Oh, <laughs> so I was so hoping there's going to be bees on that vent. Um, I just lay down here a little bit to look at my phone and call Sarah, see how she's doing. Down to the children's with the boy and. Um, Oh, now I've got to get up again. <laughs> and I don't want to, because it's hot up there. <sighs> anyway, let's go for it. It should be easy. It should be just a case of, oh my lord, there's a whole stack of bees. And I'll get the queen, because they'll be clustered around her. Um, fingers crossed. Didn't realise I was out of bottom board. I can't remember if I got any footage of it, but the first time I used the um, the BVAC with um, a more powerful vacuum, um, it turned out it was a Karcher, I had hardly any dead bees. And here I've got stacks and there's this around the outside, I don't know what that's from. Like it's, there's a bit of honey in it or nectar, but I don't think it's condensation maybe, there's maybe not enough ventilation in there. But I don't see how that would be possible because this is open and then there's all the ventilation through there. So, anyway, we'll see what we got inside. Oh, this might be um, one of those unpleasant learning experiences. There's a good lesson in what not to do. Blast and bother and I was pretty sure I had a bottom board, and I did, I just couldn't find it. Um, I've also now got the quilt made up for them. Uh, I've still got to make a lid, um, and I haven't moved, I haven't fixed them up into the bottom board and the quilt box yet, because, um, well, these girls have been through a lot and I didn't want to traumatize them any further at the moment. Thought I'd just let them, let them be for a while. Good news though, was that I have seen them bringing pollen in. So hopefully that that means it's an active queen, although it could mean that they're just feeding the um, grubs that they had already in there in the comb that I managed to salvage, but um, I hope it means it's an active queen. Uh, now, when I published um, a, a recent video, um, I got a bit of negative um, commentary with people saying that um, I didn't know what I was doing and I shouldn't be publishing videos on bees because you know, people might get the wrong idea and start doing things the wrong way. Well, if it's not clear, <laughs> and I don't know why it wouldn't be clear, but you know, I'm a beginner as a beekeeper. I've only been doing this two or three years and like I'm, I'm pretty smart, um, pretty capable. And there's a lot of things where I, I really know what I'm doing, but bees aren't one of them. And I'm not afraid to show my mistakes. You know, I'm, 
look, but it's it's a it's a way to learn faster when you talk about your mistakes and show them off, because uh, then everyone can point at them and say, well, you did that wrong, and this is how you should have done it. And when you're a beginner, you just got to be humble. That's the way it is. So if you are an experienced beekeeper and you see something that I should be improving on, other than the obvious, like don't drop a hive, um, I'd really appreciate your feedback uh, because I'm, I'm open to learning. Um, and not only will your comments help me, but they'll help other people who are watching these videos because there's a, there's a growing number of people who are really enjoying them. Um, and on that note, um, remember back in the video where we were talking, where I, sh I showed how there was all that sort of condensation and nectar in the bee box? Well, I, from some of the questions I've been, some of the snippets I've been posting on Facebook and Instagram, some of the questions I've been asking in some of the bee groups, I know the answer to that now because people have responded and people have helped me out and I really appreciate that. Uh, in this case, the guys from the Wood End um, Bee Friendly Society. Um, it turns out that all that moisture was essentially bee vomit. Be because the vac was going too strong, the bees were getting sucked in too violently, they were getting into the bee box, they were vomiting. Many of them were dying as you saw. Um, but all that fluid residue around the place was bee vomit from where basically they vomited their guts out after being taken through the tube. So, another lesson learned. Um, primarily this channel is about me sharing what I do and um, but I don't get a chance to get out much um, so it so the people that give me their feedback and their comments I really value because that's some of the only inter only non-doctor nurse social interaction I get um, now there is the subtext of we're trying to promote Hedro Farm and what we want to do there and that long-term dream but that really is um, that's a secondary thing at the moment. Um, hopefully one day it'll be a primary thing. Um, but the other real secondary thing, primary, other primary thing rather, is that I'm hoping to find a bunch of people who are in this area, um, who see these videos and say, hey, he looks like a guy he'd be cool to hang out with. Um, so if you like bees or you like woodwork or you like any of the other things that you're going to see me doing over the next month, few months, year, um, drop me a line. As much fun as I'm having, it'd be more fun if I was doing it with some people. So, catch you around, and if I don't see you in person, I'll see you in the next video.